Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about object-oriented programming and functional programming. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what does object-oriented programming do better than functional programming? And why is it the most popular paradigm when everybody seems to say that functional programming is superior? Well, uh, the, let's start off by why are people saying that functional programming is superior. It's very simple, uh, my friend. The thing that everybody talks about is the thing that nobody usually is using. Uh, and functional programming is for the vast majority of the industry an unused paradigm. There are concepts absolutely that are used and there are languages that are used but the reality is that most software developers find functional programming to be so complicated that uh, they never buy into it and um, even more than them are just doing the thing that is expected of them in order to work within the industry and the industry has standardized for most parts on object oriented programming and I can explain to you why that is which is, I think, more interesting. But the reality is that functional programming has no way of proving definitely that it is superior. Because at the end of the day, how would you prove that it is that a way of writing software is superior when the investment of learning said thing and the like the execution and everything is down to your mastership of the tool it's as i'd like to make the analogy to you know the verti or like the keyboard layout you're using today it's as it's not the most optimal way of laying out the keyboard there are actually scientifically proven ways that would make more sense that would make you a faster typer but we don't change it because the cost of changing it would be higher than the value of the typing that you are doing. And the same thing goes for programming. It's uh, why I tell people when they say, oh, this new framework is going to take over, this thing is going to take over, and I kind of go, nope, it's not. And they go and look at me like I'm weird, And but it has this little thing, and it has this thing, and it can do this better and that better, and I go, yeah, yeah, it can do all these things better. But what it lacks is a hook. It lacks something that is significant enough in terms of value that I, as a software developer and the software company, feels this one thing that is more important than everything else. If I don't use this, I am going to fall behind or I am going to lose out on this insert big value thing that everybody else is going to use because that is the way we do things now. This is the thing that every single tool that is going to beat or like a paradigm or whatever it is it needs in order to beat something. Because the thing is guys, software costs a lot of money uh, when it's done at scale. And it takes a lot of time, there's a lot of risk involved in rewrites and so forth and so forth. So just arbitrary small little things are usually not the thing that are going to get you over, the, over to the next thing. And so uh, it really has to be, there has to be something very tangible, something very comprehensible about it that is better. Now the reason why we use object-oriented programming is not necessarily because it's better in any way than, than functional programming or so forth, because as I said, it's impossible to say which of them is going to be better, because it's such an abstract thing. Uh, there are no, like, I'm not even sure how you would measure it. But the reason is because the languages that are the default, like the, the languages used for the digital products, like the hardware that we are using, are primarily object oriented. And they have historically been primarily object oriented because object orientation or object oriented programming came at a time when these sorts of products were established functional programming did not have and still doesn't have a platform that where it is valuable for someone to go and learn functional programming. Let me explain that. So if you want to do Android development or iOS development or web development or 
desktop element, uh, web development or anything like that. There is a set, now there are more of course, but in the beginning of things there was only a few languages which you could use in order to work on those platforms. And you have to remember this guys, because we software developers, we sometimes, we sometimes we get so far up our own asses that we make programming about us. It's not about us guys, it is about the damn people using the system. That's where everything is. That's where the value is. This is the whole reason your your computer is uh, exists in the first place, and the people who made those did the, the hardware, and then subsequently made the uh, I created a, a, a platform for us to write software on, made certain investments and so at a certain time, and then the software developers started creating solutions on top of their uh, this hardware, and most of these languages were object oriented. Had they been functional, I promise you, you would have a completely different way of looking at it. You would have had the opinion that object oriented, pro well maybe object oriented would never have existed, but it, it did, like it's uh, it's not something that was predetermined, and as I said, it's the, the cost of switching would be enormous. Like you would have to re-educate the entire industry, and that's just not going to happen most likely even though the functional programmers are very determined to continue explaining that that is probably how it should be done. But if we talk about things that are better or worse, it's actually really subjective. There's very little that you can say that, that I will be able to say that will be stated true. Like I've heard people say like, oh, object-oriented managed states and data better. That's complete bullshit. Like you know, functional programming can handle state better than anything. It's probably better at it than anything I've ever seen because if you do state state management in uh, functional programming is actually so simple if you do it correctly that you could never have any of the same issues that the horrible horrible patterns of internal mutations that you have in object oriented programming have where you have properties that can change in unforeseen ways if you call different methods on an object. And so like the, the, the and this but the same thing is true for like oh functional programming is better for um, I don't know performance reasons or things like that. Well, that's not really true if you're going to go with the immutability uh, this approach because immutability always, practically always costs more depending on how you do it. Uh, than just doing the thing I just said, like where you basically just mutate things in place. So it's it, to, to, to definitively say that one is better than the other is almost impossible because you, there are so many considerations and now I always say the same thing. Any tool, practically, in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing is going to be able to do the job really, really well. Any tool that is in the hands of someone who cannot do something really, really well will end poorly. And at the end of the day, that is what it matters. And the level of mastery a person has to have of programming in order to be productive and effective and really produce consistent good results without creating a bunch of problematic uh, software, well, it's higher in functional programming usually. Because functional programmers, for many, I just, I, I know why, I know why, but it's such a dumb thing and I can never, never, ever get them to understand. Guys, when you write a se sequence of composable functions that are so generic that if you read the type signature, it's just a little alphabet that you've re written of different generics, it is hard for someone who is not a master of algebraic data types or similar sorts of structures to understand what's going on. Object-oriented programming is simpler. It is something that is more comprehensible to an average person who is doing software development. And that is the thing that it does better, in my opinion, than functional programming. And incidentally, that is why really smart people, really nerdy people are the ones who learn functional and the vast majority of the industry, which are the average software developers, don't even know how to do it because they don't care because it's hard. It's complicated. They don't have to learn it. So why would they go through the hassle of learning it? And that's why it's never going to take over because it's actually more complicated usually for people to do the same things that they expect from 
whatever. And unfortunately, guys, and in case, in case you haven't noticed that, the world is made for people who are lazy and just want things to work without a lot of hassle. And that, my friend, that is not functional programming. So, what I want you to take away from this is that I personally think functional programming has a, uh, some of the best patterns. Everything about it is not great, and the reason why I personally never force my teams or anything like that to use it is because, as I said, I don't care if we're functional or if we're object-oriented. I care about that the code is working, and the reason why we, it's object-oriented programming is usually the more popular paradigm is because, number one, more people know it for the reasons I mentioned, because the hardware that we are designing our software for has primarily historically been object-oriented in the, like the languages have been object-oriented, and practically all the education is around it, around object-oriented programming. It's more digestible, it is more accessible, there's more learning materials around it. Functional programming has a lot of benefits, but what I'm saying is that it's not the fact that, it, 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 just because a lot of people hype it, guys, doesn't necessarily mean that it's better in any way. It is The reason why people hype it is because the people who are usually more uh, outspoken about things that are worse and better and so forth there if you just t pay attention you will notice that they are the minority because nobody ever 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 went on a tech talk and started talking about obvious things that everybody already knows and how great it is people usually hype the things that are experimental new cool techy etc etc and as I always tell people in order for you to deliver good solid solutions it's more important for you to bet on things that are going to be good at the thing you need uh, that you need 80% of the time rather than focus on those 20% that you might get that is extra nice because the people who are chasing the 20% are usually people who are, sp uh, who are who are I'm not saying wasting their time but they're focusing on a small part of the whole problem have a great day